Good evening, everyone. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder with you on this 11th of August, your Sunday. As always, we're privileged to have you watching Alaska Weather. Thanks for tuning in tonight. And as always, you can get more information about your weather forecast around Alaska at the Alaska Weather Information Line, 1-800-472-0391, a free call for you. You can always get more information online as well. Weather.gov slash Alaska is how you get to any of our number of services across the region for the Alaska Pacific River Forecast Center, the National Tsunami Warning Center, the Alaska Aviation Weather Unit, or any of your forecast points around uh, the land or the ocean around Alaska. If you can't find what you're looking for, please let me know. I'm happy to serve you any way I possibly can. You can find me anytime at david.snyder at noaa.gov. Something we're keeping track of in the next 48 hours is the potential for some high water on the rivers draining out of the northeastern Brooks Range, mainly due to heavy rain, and we're still watching high water around uh, the Gandal and Bering Rivers uh, due to the glacial dam release there from Berg Lake that happened earlier uh, last week. Uh, but the next thing that could happen as we head into the uh, probably uh, the early Monday to Tuesday time frame, uh, talking about some heavy rain setting up around the Denali area, generally to the north up toward Healy. Another round of heavy rain may be possible, especially as we head into Monday night and then onward into Tuesday night. Uh, so we'll be keeping track of that, and that could lead to a flood watch from our folks from uh, the National Weather Service in Fairbanks there. So they're uh, saying that that is uh, fairly likely at this point. Uh, in the meantime, we're still watching fire danger across the region. Very hit and miss across northern parts of southeast, but still very dry conditions for this time of the year. And with winds that come up at times, breezy conditions lead to windier, gusty situations, and that brings wildfire concerns up even higher than they have been. So we'll be watching for wind conditions to uh, lead us toward the path of uh, maybe even increased fire danger in that region. If that's the case, red flag warnings will be one way that you'll know that that is happening. Around the Copper River Valley, all the way down the Glen Highway into western parts of the Kenai Peninsula and up the Susitna Valley, high fire danger continues, and that does include the Anchorage area that has uh, continued to hold burn bads in place. Make sure that if you are doing any burning in your area that you're uh, making sure that you check with local officials and make sure that burning is okay before you do it. That does include campfires, of course, and stuff in the pits, uh, even if it's just trash. It could be dangerous considering the lack of moisture that we've had. As we look back yesterday to drought conditions that have spread out of southeast and into a large part of the interior and south central now, uh, conditions remain very dry, especially considering that uh, summer is quickly waning away and we're usually moving into a very wet period, one of the wettest for the year, and that hasn't really happened yet for most of the region. As we look at the satellite picture, let's see if we can find any moisture on the map. And over southeast, south central, and a large chunk of the interior, the answer is no. Two things are very clear to me, though, in this type of pattern. We have a northwesterly flow cutting across the central and eastern Beaufort seacoast there. That northwesterly Arctic jet has a lot of cold air with it. It hasn't quite reached into North America just yet, but there is some potential there. Right now, that storm energy is tracking away from Alaska. Out to the west, we have a Pacific storm. This has moved its way into the Bering now and dragging a front and moisture across the central and eastern Aleutians and into the western Bering seacoast. Uh, this is going to meet up with that Arctic jet, and eventually, as that phases or combines together, across the interior, this would be Monday night into Tuesday and onward into uh, Thursday and Friday, the potential for heavy rain in the central and western interior is something to keep an eye on here. This is uh, definitely a weather maker to come. As we look at the visible satellite picture, you can see it's been a fairly clear day all the way across the Chukchi coast into the central and western interior, down the Koyukuk Valley, over Lake Iliamna, down the Alaska Peninsula, and eastward toward Yakutat. There's been some fog and high pressure sitting out across the Gulf. It kept things fairly nice, but generally a sunny sky for a huge chunk of real estate across Alaska today. Just a beautiful day, and thus a very warm day, uh, probably where you are. Low pressure out across the western chain is still digging in that low pressure uh, southwesterly fetch coming across the Aleutians. And there's another little circulation here just south of the chain and that is going to help add and gather more moisture across the Pacific and send that north as we head into the early part of the week. So the potential there again for a lot of moisture and heat to work its way northward and combined with the jet stream uh, could make a pretty rainy situation across the central and western interior 
as we go. Here's a look at the weather map now. Low pressure sits out across the western bearing with an occluded front to the north and to the east. Uh, lows about 999 millibars, not that strong. High pressure sitting south of the Alaska Peninsula is strong, 1,024 millibars there, and that high stretches eastward into the Gulf. Several disturbances on the north and the eastern side of that, all of which are helping to draw air across the mountains, across the boundary range for southeast, and keep things very dry across most of the region. So with the plenty of sunshine we still have, and the dry sky, it's usually filled in with clouds and rain at this point. It is nothing but warm out there. Low pressure up across the uh, Tanana Valley all the way out across the west into Kotzebue Sound is trying to allow some cooler air to drop southward. It's not a very strong disturbance, and as we go ahead in time, you'll notice that that boundary actually lifts off to the north and east. High pressure reforms in its wake, sitting across the Copper River Valley. Areas of fog across the north and western Gulf Coast. And that front out west creeps eastward just a little bit more into places like Nome, across the YK Delta, and in through the central Aleutians. Now, you'll notice its position across the central chain doesn't change very much, so you're in for some rain at Adak and Atka, all the way out to Nikolsky. That southwesterly flow coming into the Yukon Delta, across Norton Sound, across Kotzebue Sound, will keep conditions fairly low. In fact, as we get into the aviation section here in just a minute, you're going to watch IFR creep eastward just about every single day as this frontal boundary is adding more and more moisture to the interior. Now, the front up north, that's where the cold air is. And as we get into later on in the week, what you're going to see is these boundaries are going to come together, especially with the jet stream right overhead. And we're going to have pretty persistent rain, it looks like, across the interior. In the meantime, dry conditions pretty much prevail for southeast, for south central, southwest, the interior. The north slope, you're looking at uh, areas of rain and drizzle, probably some fog for the central and eastern Beaufort seacoast. The front doesn't move much for Monday out in the west. It creeps in a little bit past Nome. It stays in place across the central chain. Uh, that does allow for rain and fog to creep eastward into Bethel, probably up toward McGrath and up toward Ambler, maybe as far east as Bethel's by the end of the day. What you see on the north, not a whole lot of change there. We do expect to see plenty of sunshine across the Copper River Valley, maybe as far north as Northway, and then into uh, Kenai, Homer, uh, probably over Kodiak. Southeast, you're still looking at generally cloud-free conditions south of Sitka, and Petersburg. After that, uh, maybe some passing showers. For Tuesday, not a big change. That front in the west creeps into the interior there and begins to fall apart. Areas of rain should be expected to be fairly widespread across the interior. Norton Sound, Cosby Sound, all the way across the North Slope. And here comes another surge of cooler air dropping southward. This is what's really going to set up the chance for some heavier precipitation across the interior when this boundary comes swinging southward. Again, that'll be into Monday night and Tuesday. Warmer air is resetting across the west, and what that means is another low pressure system is trying to work its way up on that southwesterly flow, and that too will add more moisture to this system as it's dropping southward. So again, something to keep watch on. Southeast looking dry as we get into Tuesday. Clouds are filling in across south central and the west. The interior in the north will be getting wet. Here's a look at temperatures now for Monday morning. Low to mid 50s for southeast. Kodiak, a mild morning at 62. Mid 50s for southwest, including uh, Bristol Bay. 55 around Bethel, a little bit cooler in Nome, 40 for Utkiavik, 42 in Kaktovik, 47 for Fort Yukon, and about 50 for Fairbanks, low to mid-50s for South Central. Highs on Monday, a scorcher again, low to mid-70s, way off the mark for this time of the year. It is unseasonably warm, to say the least. 70 around Eagle, 64 around Bethel's, 47 for Utkiavik, unheard of, 56 around Nome, and 60s and 70s for Southwest, Kodiak 70. 60s and 70s for southeast. Overnight lows stay very mild in all locations as we head into Tuesday. Even the north slope holding on to the 40s by the afternoon, mid to upper 40s, even 50 degrees on the north slope, nearing 70 in south central, with Kodiak nearing 73. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. And moving on to aviation weather now, you're going to watch as IFR is pushing eastward really all week long as the jet stream in the north that we we're talking about phases with that Pacific jet. We're going to get a very expansive area of cloud cover and most likely some rain across the interior and a lot of the west coast. And the ceilings and visibility are going to follow, of course. In the morning, watch for IFR across the Gulf and across most of the Bering Sea, really most of the Aleutians, and most of the north slope and the Arctic coast, especially really, uh, and the Chukchi coast. Uh, Kotzebue Sound and parts of inland areas of the west coast will see at least uh, some minor variation toward 
Marginal conditions with widespread VFR release for South Central, the Copper River Basin, a large part of the interior. Watch for marginal conditions generally south of Juneau as we go through the day. That should back out into the Gulf, uh, probably looking at some areas of fog, at least the potential there across the north and western Gulf and around Kodiak Island. Widespread IFR across the Bering, and again, that leading edge is going to be pushing eastward into the Yukon and Koyukuk Valleys as we get into Monday afternoon. You'll see it in the west, especially the Seward Peninsula and Kotzebue Sound first. And then as we get through the Monday afternoon period, we'll likely see marginal conditions lingering across the uh, north coast there as we get to the evening hours. As we get into Tuesday morning, that rapidly fills in. Remember, another disturbance is dropping southward, and it's going to push a lot of colder air across the interior. Not substantially cold where we're talking about freezing or uh, snow or anything like that, but it's going to be enough of a change to bring in a lot of moisture coming in from the west and southwest that you're going to see visibility and ceilings drop pretty hard. Watch for IFR conditions across the YK Delta to be fairly widespread. Marginal conditions across the Bering Sea coast for the Alaska Peninsula. Central and western parts of the Bering look to be IFR as well as most of the Gulf. Uh, the outer coast here of southeast and southern parts of the Inside Passage will be IFR for Tuesday morning. We will see some of that pull back, but notice this time marginal conditions linger across the Inside Passage, especially north of Juneau to Skagway, Haines, Gustavus, Glacier Bay, and into Prince William Sound and then all of the Alaska Peninsula really out toward the eastern chain holding an MVFR. IFR sneaks its way up the Kuskokwim and on the north side of the Alaska Range and then marginal conditions all along the Yukon, uh, the upper Koyukuk looking at IFR on the south facing slopes of the Brooks Range and on the north slope, especially the Arctic coast, we're expecting to see IFR. As we get into Monday, watch for VFR conditions there as we go through your day. And really, most of your passes should be okay. We expect to see VFR across the Alaska Range, Rainy Pass, Windy Pass, Isabel Pass, uh, all the way toward Mentasta Pass. Tanita Pass looks pretty good. Portage Pass even looks fair at this point. And Chilkoot and White Pass. Uh, this will probably be your last period of VFR as we get into Tuesday and Wednesday. Conditions should start to come down. Freezing levels for Monday morning. You can see where that cool pool of air is right now. This is that first disturbance that's making that northwesterly to southeast push into western Canada. There's another one setting up and another one behind that setting up. And we're eventually going to get into that cool pool of air pushing into a large part of the central and western interior as we go toward the end of the week. But for right now, high pressure is in charge of the North Pacific and the Western Gulf, and you're getting freezing levels that are showing 10, 12, even 14,000 foot levels. There's a lot of warm air in place for August. This is really, really unusual. Uh, Monday's icing potential, therefore, not a big deal. Uh, not on any significant threat. Uh, anything that's close to the region is going to be over the eastern Beaufort Sea coast and probably up above 10,000 feet. Here's a jet right now. You can see that northwesterly push rounding the ridge of high pressure coming across the far eastern sections of Alaska. We have low pressure across the eastern Gulf, but the really big player right now is this ridge of high pressure and the cool air on the north side of it. Eventually, this is going to slide southward through the rest of the week. So that's your long-term plan. For Monday, it really looks like a west and uh, kind of a northwesterly flow starts to set up. Here's our high pressure ridge here. We have winds coming in across southwestern Alaska at 40 knots. Northerlies leaving southeast at around 10 knots. High pressure is in charge of the situation. You can see at 3,000 feet, it's a little bit further south. Southwesterlies are still in charge here coming into Bristol Bay, 25 to 45 knots across the west coast. Westerlies across the north slope. And again, cool air is massing up here, and this is going to start dropping southward as we go through the week. Right now, weak low pressure sitting south of Haida Gwaii, drawing in northerlies at around 10 to 20. So what about turbulence as we go? This is going to be changing throughout the week. So what you see for your Monday, Probably not what's going to be expected for Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. We've had some very good persistent forecasts of what you see is what you get uh, for a better part of the last week. Again, caution here. It is going to be changing as we go through the week. Right now, we're going to start to see changes here across the central chain. That front is lined up here from southwest to north and east into the west coast. Below 4,000 feet for Adak and Atka. Nikolsky and eventually Dutch Harbor and Unalaska, considerable moderate there. Also for Unilakleet and stretching in toward places like Ruby and Galena, watch for some chop developing around Kotzebue and Norton Sound as well. Welcome back to another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder. As you well know, you can get forecast information for any day of the week. Today, tonight, tomorrow, out to six or seven days. It includes the high and low temperature, the wind direction, the chance of rain or snow in your part of Alaska. But did you know that there is information available to forecast out to two weeks? 
So the question is, how would you use that information? And here to answer that question today and tell us a lot more about climate services from the U.S. National Weather Service Alaska region is Rick Toman. He's the program manager for the Climate Science and Services. And uh, Rick, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Dave. How would we use information that is out to two weeks instead of just the high and low and the chance of rain? Well, Dave, as we move out in time, of course, uh, forecasts become more uncertain. So as we move into that second week from now, we're not looking at specific uh, highs or lows or precipitation amounts at any given place. Uh, what we can do with the state of the science at this point is get a handle on patterns. Uh, so we can uh, say things like um, increased chances for uh, stormy weather in the Bering Sea uh, in two weeks, or we've been in a cold weather pattern, looks like uh, eight to 10 days from now, that pattern's going to change. Those are the kind of forecasts uh, that we can currently make in that second week. So you're increasing lead time for perhaps big or small weather events and telling us the likelihood of uh, maybe uh, more coastal storms or wind events in some areas? Uh, those are the kinds of things that, um, that we hope to be able to, to let Alaskans know in, this, in the second week forecast. And if you have an activity or an event that you would find that kind of advance notice useful, whether it's moving stuff off of the beach, whether to go out hunting or to come back from camp, those kind of decisions, the week two uh, provides uh, the opportunity uh, for you to get a handle on that kind of information. Okay, what other type of weather impacts that we're familiar with might Alaskans use climate services for? Well, in the forecast realm, we can go uh, provide some information from this uh, week two, say the eight to 14 day period, uh, on out uh, to the uh, monthly and even seasonal time scale. Now those monthly seasonal forecasts are still kind of uh, just really very much pattern dependent and the amount of detail that we can provide at this point is still uh, pretty limited generally uh, indications of how temperature and precipitation will fall in, in uh, maybe above normal, below normal kind of range. Uh, but in the week two period, uh, we can uh, be considerably more specific than that as far as the general patterns and the really the impacts on Alaskans. Okay, so we would be talking about generalizations there that would, would tell us that the, the period might be more stormy, might be more hot, more dry, more cold, and th situations like that. That's correct. So we're not going to be able to say in which community, uh, for instance, there's the threat of coastal flooding, but we can, we'll, can often be able to tell we're moving into a pattern that would be conducive to big Bering Sea storms. So if you're in an area that that could potentially uh, impact you, you'll want to pay attention uh, to uh, the weather forecast. Okay. Now, every day and every hour of the day, the National Weather Service is working on a forecast for the next day. But how do you start your forecast process for that extended period that goes out beyond seven days? Well, the way things work right now, we start off with the expected general flow pattern uh, for Alaska and, and the whole world, really. We, and then we narrow that down to Alaska. So we start off with the basic computer model forecast. There's uh, quite a few different computer models that we look at, bring those together. And then another important part of that is we as attempt to assess the confidence. Um, the reality is often two weeks away, the computer models are very divergent. They have lots of different solutions. And that's an indication that we don't have much confidence. Uh, but when we see uh, more agreement in that time frame, and when that agreement is a pattern that will be potentially very impactful for Alaska or is a big change from what we've been in, that's when we can then take that expected pattern. We have computer models forecasting it. We've assessed the confidence. Now we can move that forward. How, using our experience as Alaskan weather forecasters, how does that uh, typically play out for Alaska? So is this a stormy pattern for the Bering Sea? Is this an extra rainy period for Southeast? Is this the kind of pattern that generates uh, strong winds potentially in, in the Anchorage Bowl? Is this a deep cold pattern for the interior? All of those are the kind of things that we're looking at in these large scale patterns. That's very different than telling you that the winds on 10 days from now are gonna be gusting to 120 on the hillside. We're looking for patterns 
not, um, not the very specific information that the Weather Service will then hone in on as the event gets closer. So the idea is to keep the five, six, seven day forecast the same where you are getting the standard high and low temperature and the chance of wind or rain, but further out you get a broad general forecast, but as the time gets closer to that event, we'll get a lot more specific. That's correct. Okay, very good. So how can people use this information if I am out in the bush and I wanna see is a coastal storm expected in my region or is a chance for that improving? over the next uh, two to three weeks, where could I go to get information like that? When we see that uh, potentially impactful or a big change in the weather is coming uh, eight to 14 days out, uh, typically we will uh, start to highlight that on uh, the Weather Service Facebook site. Um, we might produce a YouTube video uh, highlighting that, linking that on our Facebook site. Mm -hmm. um, so often we don't, at this point, we don't have much to say in that because we're really looking for those forecasts of opportunities. But one thing we can say very likely as uh, we go through the next uh, two or three years, there'll be more and more of this kind of forecast information available in that week two time frame. Okay, and something that emergency managers and city planners and uh, folks in villages might be interested in keeping an eye out for, uh, looking for that information to be headlined, uh, whether that's on social media or perhaps uh, through uh, uh, the National Weather Service channels there to get information from like uh, from you to make better plans a little bit uh, longer term and make uh, better preparations in the event that things become a little bit more unsettled. Uh, absolutely. Uh, uh, Climate Services uh, with the National Weather Service Alaska region is talking to uh, the state of Alaska every week, uh, apprising them of uh, that uh, two-week outlook and, um, and uh, on the social media side, uh, we uh, are working to uh, keep Alaskans informed so that when we think we have uh, some confidence in a high impact or a big change, mm -hmm. to, uh, that's the best way right now for folks to uh, find out about that, uh, Twitter, uh, Facebook. So uh, uh, stay tuned to uh, your National Weather Service. Very good, a developing program. Rick Toman with the National Weather Service Alaska Region. He's a Climate Science and Services Program Manager. Thanks so much for joining us again, Rick, and hope to have you back again soon. Great, thanks, Dave. For another edition of Alaska Weather Facts, I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder. We'll see you next time. And now, marine weather around Alaska. And back with your marine weather now, we'll start off with sea surface temperatures. Again, very warm conditions continue across the northern and eastern Gulf of Alaska there. That trend will continue as long as high pressure is sitting and allowing a lot of sunshine to reach the, uh, the ocean uh, surface there. That trend's been going really most of the summer. You can see some slightly cooler uh, temperatures across the northern Bering, but areas inside of Norton Sound and along the Kuskokwim Delta and inside of Bristol Bay and certainly up in Kotzebue Sound remain very warm, as does the Chukchi Sea and slightly cooler water up across the Beaufort Sea uh, to be expected after the uh, most recent meltout of the sea ice there, but overall conditions across the entire Alaska coastline remain unusually warm. A sea ice edge is well away from the North Slope coastline, uh, anywhere from about 200 to 250 nautical miles north of Utkiadvik to about 120 to 150 nautical miles north and east of Kaktovik and more melting is expected. However, several disturbances working across the Arctic Ocean in the next week or so will likely move a lot of that looser ice around, so watch for some changes in the next week to come. In the meantime, over southeast, light winds and small seas should be expected in most cases there. A little bit of a, a blustery uh, wind at times around parts of the Lynn Canal. That north and northwesterly flow will continue at 15 knots with three foot seas. Otherwise, light northwesterly is around 10 knots across the outer coast, expecting two to three foot seas on the outside, becoming four to five as we get into Tuesday, more of an onshore push developing a little bit as high pressure is on the move across the central and western Gulf. Southerlies pick up across the Lynn Canal. Northwesterlies run up to 15 knots around Stevens Passage and down to Clarence Strait, looking for about three to four foot seas there. For Monday in South Central, small seas, light winds inside and outside of Prince William Sound, not too bad. A light westerly flow there at 10 knots. Southerlies coming up Cook Inlet, 10 to 15, and three to four foot seas expected on Monday. Uh, you'll expect that to pick up a little bit on Tuesday as the next weather disturbance is coming in from the west. You'll see that gradient pick up in the winds and Southerlies uh, increase to about 25 knots across the central and northern parts of Cook Inlet with 
six to eight foot seas on the inside. Areas across the north and western Gulf won't see that dramatic of a change, but still looking at 10 to 15 knots from the west and southwest and seas holding around two to three feet. For Bristol Bay, similar changes on Monday. A west and southwesterly flow here, 10 to 25 knots, the highest of which will be further out toward Cold Bay and the eastern chain. And west and southwesterly is around Kodiak Island and the North Pacific waters. Anywhere around 15 knots or so, about 3 to 5 foot seas expected on Monday. And winds will come up a little bit more on Tuesday, not as sharply as what we saw in Cook Inlet, but 15 to 20 knots should be expected in all areas. 4 to 7 foot seas, the highest of which will be around Shellacoff Strait on Tuesday. For the Aleutian chain, expect a southerly flow across the central and eastern islands out in the west, more of a southwesterly flow. Low pressure is holding out here across the west. The front is working across the central chain, and you'll get a little bit of a circulation here and some gustier winds at times. Seas across the Pacific waters at 8 to 9 feet, and for the Bering Sea coast, 4 to 6 feet expected on Monday as we get into your Tuesday. A little bit more of that wraparound flow reaching into the western chain, south and southeasterly winds will be the strongest around Adak and Atka, 20 to 30 knots with southerlies from Nikolsky to Unalaska, 20 to 25, expecting send 7 to as high as 10 feet south of the central Aleutians, generally from Atka to Nikolsky on Tuesday. For the west coast, southerlies are coming up there. Look for a south wind, 20 knots, 4-foot seas inside of Norton Sound, south and westerlies from Macoriak Island all the way out toward or, uh, Nunavak Island with Macoriak on there. Uh, all the way out towards St. Matthew, 15 to 20 knots, 6 foot seas expected. And southerlies for St. Paul and St. George, 6 foot seas there with a 15 knot wind by Monday. You'll see those increasing as we head into Tuesday. Southwesterlies, uh, 15 to about 20 knots there across the northern waters with southwesterlies in the Kuskokwim Delta regions. Around 20 knots with a 6 foot sea and 7 foot seas for St. Paul and St. George. For the North Slope, Easterly winds now light, 10 knots and 2 to 3 foot seas for the Beaufort. An offshore flow continues from Cape Lisburn to Kibbalina and Cotsview, about 10 to 15 knots with 2 to 3 foot seas. Picking up a little bit more onshore on Tuesday with that southwesterly flow coming into the uh, Chukchi coastline there. 15 knots from the north and east on the Chukchi seacoast itself from Utkavik all the way down to Cape Lisburn. And east and northeasterlies for the Beaufort, 15 knots and 2 to 4 foot seas expected as we head through your Tuesday. Let's recap the weather at hand for most of the state. It's going to be dry for southeast, south central, a large part of southwest and the interior. But as the front moves in slowly Monday and Tuesday, the possibility of some heavier rainfall develops across the western interior. And a flood watch will be posted for the Denali region and areas around Healy in the southern interior as we go from Monday night and on into Tuesday. Watch for periods of gusty winds across the central chain and sometimes across the west coast. Uh, the big change will be slightly cooler weather, cloudier conditions, lower ceilings and visibility for many of our aviators, and uh, the option for some heavier rainfall as we get into the midweek. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.